this way. But you come with some thoughts that say, we're going to resolve this issue within the group. So my point is that the communication is still good, but you just don't want to do it when you're angry or you don't have the right spirit or you don't recognize the love. The love is not, of God is not showing in you at the time. You need to go sit down, sit down somewhere. Because if, if folks come to you and they are not in love and they saying all kind of stuff, how much reception are you going to receive? They're not going to hear you. I remember I, there, was, there was plenty of uh, uh, coming up. Mothers, they say something to you so mean and so cruel, just mean in the church. You talk about church hurt. Yeah, they felt like they were supposed to tell you. And you know, I pray that when I get older, I don't get nasty. Oh, Lord, please don't let me get nasty when I get older. You know, because you don't want to push people away, you're trying to bring them in, even if it's something that they need to know. So, you know, I find that a lot of times, you know, we can pray and the Lord is able to show people. I remember we had a pastor, they'd be throwing off on the pulpit. I, I said this before, they'd be throwing off. They were so cruel with their conversation and what they were saying. But the Lord let me know, these are my people. They're not thwarted by the lie that comes from the pulpit. I was like, oh, but well, let me sit back and chill. Because just like I saw it wasn't God, they saw it wasn't God. So that's where we have our confidence in knowing God for ourselves in our own relationship. Now, I have a tendency to run out of time. So we, we about to uh, go on a little further. I wonder if anybody would per, uh, like to read for me. I, uh, you know, it's Ezekiel 18th chapter. We could be, uh, begin, at the, uh, begin at the 20th verse. If anybody, I didn't grab my Bible. How is this over here? Anyway. Um, my point being, yeah, Ezekiel 18, begin at the 20th verse. Ezekiel 18 and 20. Ezekiel 18 and 20. Thank you. Sir. The soul sinneth, it sh the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Okay, but if, let, let, me, let me stop you there for mm -hmm. a moment. In the Old Bible, which we call the Old Testament, the, the, uh, if this, the father committed the sin, it passed on to his children. So the sins of the father were also guilty for the children, the sons, where... You know, one time <laughs> they destroyed the father and then they killed all 10 of his sons. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad that we can see that now we have an individual choice. Go ahead and read a little bit further. But if the wicked would turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep all of my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and shall not die. All right, all right. So God is giving opportunity for the son or any of us to choose righteousness at this point. So we have that. And when you choose righteousness, God can work with you. If you don't choose righteousness, if you choose to be like your father, you're going to get the consequence of the father or because of your individual sin, if that made sense. Go ahead and read a little further, sis. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, and his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. So if you do righteousness, you shall live. Have I any, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, said the Lord God, and not that he should return from all his ways and live? And when the righteous turn away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? Mm. All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned in his trespass and in trespass that he have trespassed and in his sins that he have sinned. And them 
shall he die. Yes, yes. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. that, that, that just goes to the point that if we understand our wick wickedness is what's going to cause us to die. Our righteousness will cause us to live. All right. So your timeliness is important. If, in fact, you choose to have righteousness and then you say, oh, I don't want to live for the Lord anymore. I'm going to do wickedness. And you go back, then you'll die. It is not God's pleasure that he will bring death to the wicked. He wants everyone to be righteous. He showed himself when he did that for Nineveh the first time. He could have destroyed them. And by all rights, the wickedness that they had, he should have, but he showed mercy. Mercy enough, which is a lesson that we had earlier as well. I think God actually taught that. So the whole point is that we want to keep our righteousness and continue. Don't stop. Don't go back. Go ahead. Are you finished there? Oh. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, it is not my, my, it is my way equal. Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he have done shall he die. All right. Again. Oh, okay. So go ahead. Go ahead. No, I like it because yeah. the word is plain. Straight. And forward. so I'm not making this up. You see what I'm saying? Go, mm -hmm. go, go right ahead. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live and shall not die. All right, all right. Now, isn't that the goodness of God? Amen. That's what the lesson is about. He's an avenger, and he his plan is to redeem and restore us. So we want to take advantage of the opportunity that God has presented. Is there another verse, sis? Um, I, I got more. Is it 28? Did you get to 28? Oh, yeah, I finished. That was 28. Oh, right okay, there. very good. That's where I needed you to stop. Okay, so um, God has a plan for his people from the beginning. Okay, this is not news. Whenever someone rises up against them, God will always avenge them and fulfill his plan. So we're talking about God's people, okay? I kind of skipped over that. Our responsibility is not to take vengeance into our own hands, but to trust the hand of the Lord to work on our behalf. The more confident you are in God, the more confident you will be that he will be your avenger at the right time. Okay, so now we must put down the carnal desire to seek vengeance and seek after God to be our avenger. After all, judgment left in his hands will be executed far better than we could ever do. So the, the point is back uh, I wanted to comment before, but I wanted to finish the reading where it said contemplating the top topic. Had you ever prayed that God would take vengeance on some for someone on your behalf? Well, the problem is, which is why, you know, God has told, it, told us to forgive is that God can forgive them. If they repent, God will forgive them. You are running around being all hurt because what they said, what they did. You got to stop your own pain. You got to let it go. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, we can't let it go. That's why so many folk don't get saved because they, they don't trust God enough to know that he's going to allow you to live righteously. He's going to allow you to forgive that person. He's going to allow you to let it go. There's no need in holding frustration and anger. There's no need because God has a plan for his people. God knows more than we know. We think we know, and you know, as humans, I see you, sis, as, as people, we think we love to be in control. Our flesh loves to be in control. We want to run the show. We want to run our life. We want to tell folk what for, this way, that way, and know, and what you're not going to do, that's what the flesh wants to do. But what God is saying is give me the chance to take care of that for you. I'm here for you. I got you. You are my people. You don't have to fight your own battle. You can give it to me. God will even give you wise counsel in the midst of those situations. Sometimes he'll tell you, do this, do that. Do, 
Because you're not angry, you're not trying to be in control, you're not frustrated, God allows you to have some information that's going to help your situation. That's the kind of God we're saving. Because, you know, many times people have ought against you and don't tell you why. Have you experienced that? People got ought against you and they ain't even tell you what you did to them. And then even when you go and say, well, have I done something to you? Oh, no. Just lie through the teeth. And I know they lying. <laughs> but, you know, I don't say you lying. No, there's no love in that. There's no love in it. And I said, well, well, bless the Lord, if you find something or you remember something, I would love to know what it was. And I would like to say I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you, um, Mother Walker, she, was, she taught me. She did this one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't cost you anything to give an apology. What is it going to cost you? What are you going to lose by giving an apology? Agree with that adversary quickly while you're in the way? You say, well, uh, well, I'm so sorry. It needs to be sincere because you had no clue that the person, although it may be ridiculous to you. It may be like, what in the world is wrong with them? You see, but they're feeling hurt. They're feeling offended. If, in fact, you cause the offense with no intent to cause the offense, what is wrong with an apology? It is okay to say, you know, I apologize because I, I surely did not mean any offense. I apologize to you. Um, will you forgive me? Forgive me for that. And that puts you in right standing. Now, what the way that the Lord deals with me, he let me know, yeah, they got a problem with you. They got a problem with you. That's why they've been acting that way. But I need to show them love and show them that I don't have that, you know, because sometimes people think about evil that don't even enter my mind. So their evil thoughts, she this, she meant this, she meant that. You could be in the pulpit preaching and somebody said, oh, she preached on me. Because they were found in their sin. We're not talking about somebody I would have said something you know, about. I do speak generally. I try not to do it with people present, you know, but I'm saying that to say because everybody doesn't always know what is right to do. You know, it's just like uh, uh, I go to pastor's house. I'm, when I sleep at pastor's house, I take the bedding off. I make the bed. I clean the room. I take the trash to the dumpster or wherever she stores her trash. I'm cleaning it like it was when I got there. I'm taking, yeah, Pastor said, she said, and you brought chicken. Well, I brought chicken. I brought rolls. I mean, I brought uh, bread. I brought uh, breakfast stuff. If I could, but you know, mama, I got to get back to mama. But I'm saying that to say that is so that I'm not taking advantage of her situation. It doesn't mean that she requires it. No, no, no. She says, throw them, throw them chiefs down the, bed, down the stairs. I said, Pastor, I'm still going to pick them up and take them into the laundry room. Would you like me to wash them? There is a way that you do things, and some people don't know. They may not have been taught. So it's not like we hold it against people. But if I come to your house, it is not your burden to feed me unless I don't have anything. I can't buy it. I can't, um, I can't cook it, you know. If I can wash the dishes, I'm going to wash the dishes. I'm going to sweep the floor. I'm going to mop the floor. I'm looking to make it easy for you with my presence. Everybody doesn't do that because they don't know any better. They have not been taught so. You can say, you know, hey, would you sweep the floor for me? I'm in the kitchen working. Come on. You come in there. Don't just sit down. Come on, get the broom. Let's do this. Only for people that are staying a length of time. I'm not saying every time you go to somebody's house you have to do that. But I'm saying that you're trying to give them respect and let them feel. Like if they go to the grocery store, you can pay for the groceries. Or you can get a few things that you eat that you can share with them. You know, there's ways to let them know. You know, because I, I, my cousin, I go down there to Florida and I, I give her money and she's like, no, no. I said, wait a minute, you got the same training I got. So I leave the money on the coffee table. 
I'm like, and then there she go in there and give me one of them name brand purses, you know. It's because she doesn't want or need probably the money. But my point is, I don't come to be a burden to you. I, you know, you're talked about, if you go to somebody's house, you run up the uh, uh, pay-per-view. It used to be called pay-per-view. What's it called now? <laughs> I don't know. You're watching movies where it costs money. Uh, people, I, I've heard stories, you know, and you're making hardships on the family. You know, you you put the dishes, you got the dishes under the bed, you know. You go in there eating in their bedroom, then you leave it just like that. Nasty, you know, just go in there. Okay, so I digress. I apologize. So we must put down the carnal desire to seek vengeance and instead seek after God to be our avenger. I say, let it go. Don't even look for when he's going to do vengeance because it can go either way. If that person, you know, we have to allot for the fact that people can improve themselves. They don't have to stay in the same situation they're in. They can begin to learn and be in tune with the spirit that lets them know, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I have done that many times. I have looked at, you know, even my testimony. I've looked at things that says, what are you doing? What was that? What? You got to watch the flesh because the flesh is subject to whatever comes up in your little mind. And so we have to be aware. We have to be conscious and um, make a change on the spot, on a dime. Turn around. You know what? I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. And I'm like, oh, that okay no it wasn't okay because my spirit wasn't right I felt something in my spirit if I'm feeling like you know something uh, is not quite right I've got to get that right so I don't want you to be subject to me being inappropriate in my heart okay now God's sovereignty perhaps one of the greatest struggles with the carnal mind has is fully okay one of the greatest struggles the writer is saying has uh is fully comprehending that god is sovereign our and then i talked about the flesh wanting to be in control somebody do what oh somebody had the, oh sister johnny forgive me see how i did that see how i did that thank you thank you You got to use, yeah. So for me, like right now, I have like an action situation going on at work. Um, the talks, I mean, it's literally hitting this, you know, nail on the head. Um, like I was talking to, I was talking to one of my coworkers, um, you know, and he began to just tell me some things that other folks in within my unit had begun to say about me. And I was like, oh, they're talking about me. I'm like, okay, so what are they saying? So, um, you know, he told me some of the comments, and I was like, they weren't bad, but it was just the fact that, you know, they noticed that I work more. They noticed that, you know, I'm not in the office more like I'm out in the field doing stuff like I have like 70 some kids to see a month like I'm out in the field like I got to get these mandates done. So they're like, you know, the, why ain't Johnny at work? Why ain't she doing this? You know, you know, they notice that I have different work hours, you know, I may work at one, two in the morning. And I'm like, okay, so I'm like, you're attacking me because I have a different work ethic. I'm like, oh, so in my head, I began to be like, okay, you know, and then the more I kept thinking about it and processing it, I got a little irritated. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you. And I was like, because I'm not doing the eight to five that they do, and then in between that, taking two hour lunches that they don't put on the time clock that they take in, but they'll talk to you in the midst of the group and say where they've been. Because I'm not doing those things and because I'm not taking vacations and because I'm not going on vacations with everybody, that makes me somebody that, you know, they kind of point that out. And so because I was told that, like not last week, but the week prior, 
you know, I just told Mike I was irritated, you know, and I was like, you know, I just feel like I'm not coming into work because it's like, what's the point of being there? Because when I'm there, you know, with smile on my face, but then I got one person confirming that you guys talk about me being in the field more, doing more work. And I'm just like, in my fleshly mind, and I know this ain't the spirit because God don't think like for me. I'm like, I ain't saying nothing to him. So this past week, I'm not going to lie, I went to work. When I say conversations was at a zero, conversations was at a zero. And it wasn't because I was being mean. It's because I know myself. And until God releases that frustration off of me, it's best that I just come to work and hide and literally that's it. Because I know that I could say something to offend, and that's not what I want to do. So I, I guess other people in the unit noticed that I wasn't talking. And so a couple of them came up to me trying to engage, and I was just kind of like, oh, I'm good, you know, I'm fine. And I'm just like, when I say minimal, minimal, that's it. And so I found myself, and one of the workers, she was so sweet, she's new, I called her cell phone Friday night, and I said, I just want to let you know that I'm not upset with you. Like, there's a lot of stuff work-related that I'm frustrated about. But also, you know, I'm just, I need to take a minute to disengage. I need to take a minute. I said, it's not because of you. I want you to know that you're perfect, you're fine. And if you ever need something, come talk to me. But I said, because I'm dealing with some things right now, I want you to understand that I apologize because I know you were trying to talk to me. And I gave you zilch, like nothing. Um, but it's like for me, like you said, don't hold the frust. Well, I, I, let me go back. She w received it, and she told me she very well understood, you know, and she appreciated that. That way she could kind of know going forward that if Miller don't talk that much, it ain't, you know, I, I told her don't take it personal. It's not about you, but it's about, you know, just my frustration with everything. And so it's like being in the unit with these folk, and I know the things that they say, for me, I'm a real person. If I don't gel with you, I don't pretend like you and I gel, right? Like, I don't. I've never been the type of person that I could just sit there and overlook that me and you are not cool and I could deal with the issue at hand. I'm all about being real, having a pure relationship through and through. If even one step is out of place, I can't pretend that we're good. Because I feel like that's a false pretense. I feel like that's me giving you a facade that we're okay. Like you said earlier, you know, going to that person, oh, you fine, but then in, in the back end, you talking about them. Um, and I've always been that way. And so I'm literally trying to ask God to, to help me overcome and help me to, I don't know, and maybe some of the saints can kind of chime in, what do they do? Because it's like, this is a real struggle for me you know, going to work, and I'm just like, looking at these folk, and I'm like, y'all just, and, and I know sinners do what sinners do, and part of that, I don't hold against them, because I know that's what unsafe folk do, I'm okay with you doing the unsafe thing, because you are perfectly in your unsafe state doing what you do, so I can't hold that against you, but it's like, how do you try to I guess, release the frustration from yourself. Because I remember I went to sleep, and I told Mike, I heard, it, it was it was the weirdest thing. I heard God speak in the middle of the night, vengeance is mine. And I was like, okay, because I was trying to figure, I even asked him, like, what, how do I interact with these folks? And it's like, I heard the Lord say, vengeance is mine. But it's like knowing God spoke that to me, but then when I get to work and I see him, I have a total different demeanor. Like, I don't want them around me. I don't want y'all talking to me. Don't sit, like, when I'm in my, you know, I will legitimately take my headphones, plug myself up, blast my gospel music, just so I can ignore and drown out everything. You know, and it's like, I'm trying to get to where I can, you know, function, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. and not hold the frustration in. Because that's what I do. I, I hold frustration in. I don't like to go to folk and say, oh, you made me upset. I, I don't, I just, I deal with it internally. That's how I've always done. And then eventually God will release it and then I'll be fine. And then I keep going. 
but how do I get past that phase? I guess is what I'm yes. trying to say. Does any, anyone else want to uh, say anything at this point in response to um, Prophetess Johnny and her concern? Uh, because the, uh, the thing is, it's um, the exercising of faith, meaning that sometimes you've got to talk to yourself and say, you're going to have to let this go. Because really what's happening is it's a detriment to yourself. I understand what you're saying, but um, this something just we got to pray on and, and we grow in stuff. This is what you got to grow in. So, um, and you know what you got to grow in. <laughs> That's good, you know. Um, and I have, you know, I used to say to myself, man, Stephanie, why don't you see this or whatever what somebody did to you? And I said, sometimes God just blind me to it. <laughs> and I thank God for that. But you know what? He'll give you, you keep on, you pray about it. He'll give you peace when you know the enemy has done you wrong. You know that person has done you wrong. And you'll be able to have a peace. Because just like you said, the people are people. That's who they are. And I'm not going to just say the world. It's people right up in the church would do it, okay? So, People will do you wrong and just do you wrong. But God will give you that peace. You, you not be like, man, this person done did me wrong. But I could sit up here and I could say praise the Lord, Sister Johnny, and I ain't mad about it. You know, and, and I wanted to encourage you in Romans, okay, um, we want to make sure that this is what we want to make sure of. Recompense to no man evil for evil. So we want to make sure we don't do that, okay. So they may be evil. But we got to show the love of God still. Okay, so I want to encourage you. Uh, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Okay, these are goals. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, so I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if, it, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. They're going to know 
who he is. They're going to know who God is. When you can go in there, just Sister Johnny, and God has given you the peace to go in there and do your job and still say, how you doing, Frank? And really mean it. How are your kids doing? I know that they were such and such happened and really mean it. And God can do that for you. He will. It's only going to show who God is. Show the world that God is on the inside of you, that you are an ambassador of Christ. You represent Jesus Christ. And you can say, man, they can look at you. and That's all you want them. You want them to see Jesus. That's all they, you want them to see Jesus. Yes, they are clowning you. That hurts. But when you can walk in there and you know it, you know who they are. You recognize, I know, you know who your enemy is. But you can still do good. You can still say, I'm bringing in such and such for the potluck, for such and such birthday party, and have no problem bringing it in. God will give that to you. He will give that to you. Uh Uh-oh, let me see, I messed up, let me see. I, there was one more verse that I wanted to say. It was at the end. Be not overcome, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So that's all we we that's what just do good. Do good. Work on things little by little, what you can do. If it means just saying good morning again. <laughs> you know, if that's all you can get out, say good morning. Next week, you may be able to say, good morning, how you doing? You know, but God will take them with you because we got to show, we got to show God, no matter, even when they're evil, but we're going to show who God is. And Sister Joy, I was going to say too, um, a lot of times you you think about, because I mean, we've all experienced situations at work, um, but those are opportunities to allow Christ to shine through you because what people are expecting you to do, you're doing the complete opposite. You know, you know how you responded before you accepted Christ into your life. And if somebody had my name in their mouth, okay, I'm gonna cut you off. You're dead to me. But those are opportunities to be an example to the unbeliever. Because people are knowing who's people talking about in the office. And, oh, Sister Johnny is acting this way, even though she knows that X, Y, and Z was said, regardless of what example. And the example, like Sister Joy said, they talking about you. Why? Because you're doing good things. Because you're working. So be mad at me because I'm working and I'm doing my job. But like Sister Stephanie said, you come in there and you be a light. You be an example because eventually somebody gonna say, "Well, how in the world you gonna be nice to somebody when you know they talking about you?" And <laughs> insert Jesus because it's the God that lives in me. You see what I'm saying? two o'clock in the morning, then that's something you work out with your husband. If your manager says you cannot help your client at two o'clock in the morning, then you don't do it. You see what I'm saying? But as long as 
and they, you know, they did a study on social work at the convention. It is a work of the heart. If you feel that you have to take care of what's going on with your client because of an urgency, you're not going to say, well, I'll catch you in the morning. They got the police over there. You can't go. What? So I'm saying that to say we're it's just to ditto what Sister Stephanie, Sister um, Michelle were saying, that the power is in you to change your mind. Put your flesh down. Tell your flesh, okay, we're we about to do it a different way. We're not about to stay in this frustrated situation because they don't know me. So, you know, it's just like me saying, oh, you're a terrible wife. Are you getting ready to be upset with me? It doesn't mean anything. It does not mean anything because it's not true. So when something is not true, it's easier to let it go. If it were true, then I'd understand, you know, you continuing to, you know, try to get through that. But I'm saying if you put it in its appropriate perspective, what you're really doing and what's messing with their flesh, you're making them look bad because you're doing a better job than they're doing. You can't slack on your responsibility because you're driven in here about what to do. So you can't slack on it, you know, and yes, you got immature people. Everybody is not at the same place, even in the church, everybody's not at the same place. So we have to build in that part of us that lets us let things ride. We got to let That's it go. That's how the enemy the enemy is always is always looking for opportunities to throw you off of your A game, quote unquote. Yes. yes. And the enemy is going to come at you. I'm going to say um, very, not the right way. Well, how yes. do you follow a game? All games. And we know that it, with you, for instance, we're going to say that's what hits close to home for you is because you want to make sure that you're doing a good job at work, but also you want to make sure you're doing a good job at home with your family and being there. So the enemy is going to play dirty. But you know what? That's what we're going to do is we're going to trust in God. We're going to put it in God's hands and we're going to allow God to operate and work it out. And be our adventure. And be our adventure, which is literally going to go all the way back to what our lesson is. He's our yeah. avenger. So you know what, God, this is making me mad. This is making me upset. Lord, you know, I'm doing my best at my job. Lord, you know, I'm doing my best at home with my husband and with my children and doing what I'm supposed to do in, in, the, in these two worlds. God, I need you because ultimately at the end of the day, when it comes down to the core of it, that's what he ultimately wants. Whatever situation that we're facing, God, I need you to be my avenger. I need you to be my Captain America. I need you to be whatever, King Kong, whatever. I need you to be that God. So God, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be the one to seek justice and I'm not gonna be the one to be like, oh, I'm gonna cut you off. I ain't gonna say nothing. God, I'm putting it in your hands. I'm gonna walk in that office on Monday morning, Tuesday, whenever you go, good morning. Good morning, John. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Erica. I'm not gonna change who I am. I'm going to put a smile on my face. I'm going to walk in there because guess what? You know that walking in there, he walks before you. And he's going to fix the situation. Whatever. We think about, you know, him shutting the lion's mouth. He can shut their mouth very well. God is your avenger. And that's the one thing that you can hold tight to. That I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do, he's my avenger. Yes, he is. He's going to fix the situation. You know what you're doing at home. You know if you're a good wife, if you're a good mom. And these, and then this goes to having conversation with your spouse. Michael, Johnny, you you know, you you dropping the ball. The laundry stacking up. I'm cooking dinner. You know, whatever. Those are the conversations you have with your spouse, but you know, and he knows if you're doing a good job in the house. And you know what? Don't worry about what somebody gotta say, they don't live with you. That's right. 
But he's your Avenger. So, I mean, that. listen, to me, that's good enough to know he's my Avenger. He's my Captain America. And I know that God is going to fix the situation, bottom line. And, and that's what the enemy does. The enemy wants you to change your character. Yes. Because he's playing dirty. He's playing dirty. So you know what? Devil, I see you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He is my Avenger. He's going to fix this situation. Yes. And did you go hold tight to both? You know. It doesn't matter what you do. The devil's gonna play dirty. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter if you delivered the baby. The devil is going to play dirty. It doesn't matter if you had the baby. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. The devil is going to play dirty. And that's the whole thing I guess that keeps falling in my spirit is that the devil is going to play dirty. But you know what? Again. People going to do what people going to do, but you, again, he is your avenger. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? I'm going to continue to be nice. I'm going to continue to help. I'm going to continue to do if you need me. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to be that light, be that example, because that's what God wants you to do. But he ultimately wants you to put the situation in his hand. I'm not asking for myself to fix it. I need you to fix it, Jesus, because I know if it were me, I know how I'm going to act. I know what I'm going to do. So I need something greater. He's your Avenger. Uh, sister oh, Simi is next. Uh, it's okay. I was, I was just thinking, like, like what you what you were talking about, and everybody's um, comments. It was everything is so beautiful because, um, and I'll wrap it up short. You know, on Friday. You know, I was specifically frustrated with one of my coworkers, and she left for lunch but didn't come back for two hours, and I'm like, where are you? And, you know, I have spoke with her constantly over and over again, and me being the team lead, you know, I was really frustrated with her. So I called her, and I said, Courtney, where are you? And she gave me all the excuses in the world, and um. She normally does this thing where she needs to, to plead her case. But I had to cut her off because I was aggravated. And then when I got home, it just follows me home because she's calling me 15 times talking about, can we talk? And I finally said to her, I said, Courtney, I'm not in the right state of mind to talk to you right now. I said, I'm frustrated. And I said, I need to shut up and be quiet. And I said, please stop calling me. I said, now when Monday comes, we will handle the situation at hand and we will figure out what we need to do. But as for right now, and this is the weekend, I, I can't take anymore. Mentally, I'm drained. It's hot out here. It's 80 something degrees out here. We work it. You know what I mean? And when I, you know, and the frustration of her is just multiple stuff that she's done that I've counseled her on. You know, I've picked Courtney up and said, Courtney, I'll take you to mental health. Courtney, whatever we need to do, we'll do it. You know, I even say at work, well, I know you talk about me, but it's okay. And I laugh it off because I feel like, to me, that's a coping mechanism because I know the echo in the background, but I can't pay attention to just, that's just crazy noise to me. It's not important. You know, what's important is for me to come and do my job and do what I need to do. And so and when I go to work, I keep always saying in my mind, okay, love, love, love. So when Monday comes, I'm going to keep saying love, love, because I know she's going to come to me with every bullet in the world with everything that she's got to say whatever she needs to say to avenge herself and you know not come to my boss and tell them the truth about basically you know you're stealing time you were not where you needed to be at the time that you were supposed to be and so I have to go and some of the time and I feel bad because sometimes I have you know made things known but kind of smooth it over instead of just being point blank with it because I feel like people need grace and mercy 
because that's what God is. So let me just smooth it on over, you know, with my boss and say, well, let's give her a chance. You know, I'm a big advocate for him. Don't fire him. Let's keep working with him. Let's keep being patient. Let's keep fighting for them. They, you know, she'll come around. She'll come around. But I'm coming to the conclusion, like, yesterday I was like, I don't know if I can do this next year. I don't know if I can work with her next year. This is, this is getting out of hand. But I'm asking God to help me because I know Monday it's going to be a fight. And literally, I'm going to have to ask God for help, ask God to watch what I say and let her plead her case and listen, and then definitely draw out the rules like I always do, and then keep it going. But I just I just wanted to point that out. But. You know, and yes, yeah, sometimes we do need time so that we can make a righteous judgment. Uh, one of the things about the lesson, which um, I want to get to, uh, was that God would bless people. He would be merciful to them, but he also gave them consequences for the sin. He issued judgment against them because of sin. He had to do it because he was a just God. Without being a just God, he cannot destroy the people. He has to be just and give consequence for wrongdoing. And as a, as a uh, manager, the simple, the simple solution is to say, on such and such a date, you left at such and such a time, you came back at such and such a time, which left one hour that was unaccounted for in your work history, adjust your timesheet to reduce that hour. Start giving consequences. It's okay if she does a good job, you want to keep her, but not when she continues to do wrong. There needs to be consequences. And that's what God did. He, you know, people think um, God is a good God. He's not going to send us to the lake of fire uh, that burns with fire and brimstone. He's not going to do that because he's a loving God. Yes, but he's also a just God. He has to stand against sin. That is the premise. If you repent, he will forgive. It, there gives a, a, a lesson here. I mean, um, um, vengeance belongeth to me. I will rec recompense, say the Lord. Nothing means more to him than his people. Okay, I'm not at the right place that I'm trying to say. Uh, the, the particular point he's talking about, when someone is righteous, the grace is larger and the consequence is smaller. But when someone is unrighteous, the grace reduces and the consequences yeah, increase. So it is based on what is being done, whether you're doing righteous unto righteousness, you're repentant, you're living for God, or whether you're continuing to commit, commit sin, disobey. Those two determine what has to happen at that point. So I'm saying that to say that, you know, as much as God shows us mercy, he's also going to give us consequence for what we do wrong. You know, I was thinking uh, back to uh, Sister Johnny. Uh, I remember as women and mothers, wives that work outside the home, we have mo mommy guilt. So it's a sensitive area. We already know that, you know, if I wasn't on this job, I'd be doing more for my family. So they can't, they can't pick anything unless it can hurt you, you see. So they're going to pick that, and that's where you receive it. But don't receive it. Just say, I don't receive that. I don't receive it. You know, the, the power to change our flesh is to tell our flesh we're not going to keep feeling this way. Oh, no, we're coming up out of that because it's ridiculous for someone to be upset because you're doing your job and they're not. That's ridiculous. No, we're not going to get upset about that. So, you know, I, I appreciate uh, what Sister Stephanie said, Sister Michelle said, and I know that you can overcome it because it's all a part of living the life for God because it's going to happen again. So this is not a test we want to repeat. We want to overcome this one. And be good at this test and be like, hey, I passed the test. Go on and talk about me. Hey, I'm well, good. You know, this is the same thing. I feel like Pastor Linda and Sister Stephanie about um, at Sunday school, we're going to have
essay about a month ago that when tests come, we recognize it that this is it's happening to, to build me up, make me stronger. And so we recognize it and we say, okay, God, we're going to praise our way through. And I feel like it was something of that nature, praising our way through in a dark time, you know, just something of that nature. But again, okay, God, we're going we're gonna to praise our way through this because we know that God is going to bring us out victoriously. And I think it had something about being victorious in mm-hmm. dark times or something of that nature. But in this time, we're going to praise our way through whatever you fill in the situation, you fill in the blank, that whatever I'm going through right now, I'm going to come out victorious because I know God is going to bring me through this. And I believe in Luther. Amen. You know? Amen. See, the, 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 the scripture here says God created everything. He orders everything. He rules over everything. Our finite mind struggles with understanding just how God created everything of nothing but the expression of his desire through the sound of his voice. That's how great God is. So we've got to put ourselves out of the picture of wanting to be in control of what our life. We want to just keep our hands and, you know, be in control. Well, after this, I'm, I'm getting ready to go out to dinner. You know, um, and something can come up. So what, are we going to be upset that our plans change? Because God is over everything. He is sovereign. He is in control. We accept his control and abide by his will. Okay? So um, let's see. I, we're, we're done, aren't we? Okay, so um, there is this, this lesson here was uh, very good. And, of course, you know, I didn't get through everything. But um, the internalizing the message shortly, we should never let our faith waver when it seems as if we're about to be destroyed. Rather, we should express every confidence that God will avenge us. And what is happening in our lives is working for our good. So we're going to have another opportunity to say, oh, you know, they were talking about me for a little thing. You know, I know they didn't know no better. And I went right on in there and said, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Anybody want any coffee? I'm getting ready to go. I'm going to go get some. Y'all want some water? I mean, we put ourselves in these positions so that we can show the love of Christ. Because through love and kindness have I drawn you. I'm down at the last paragraph. When we allow him to be our avenger, we're declaring that we trust him to fulfill his plan in us. We are identifying ourselves as belonging to him, and we're trusting he is a sovereign God who will judge our enemies and deliver us. So the Psalm 35 says, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of the shield and the buckler, etc. So if we believe God, we can trust God that he has our best interest at heart and he loves us more than anything and that he will continue to bless us. Service in the hands of Amen. Sister Michelle. Oh, Sister Simmons. Oh, Sister Simmons.